Yo, what is going on? I'm back here today with an amazing video, a back-to-back -back tournament video. Yes, my smoke on Premier League Week 2 match, which is right in front of you right now, and my draft Premier League Week 2 match. Yes, that's right. I entered a draft league. I decided it was time. Well, I saw all my associates on YouTube continue to play draft. I figured I needed to get in on the action, so I'm playing draft Premier League. I went for 15k in the auction, a modest price for someone of my skill level and caliber. I was quite surprised, honestly. I was expecting like 200k, but either way, I'm playing for my team. But I guess I'll talk about that later. But either way, I got two games. First one's going to be Gen 7 OU. The, actually, the second one's Gen 7 OU too, it's, but it's like draft. But either way, let's get right into this. So, SPO, week two, blunder of the Dragon Spiral Tyrants versus Swapo, who is on congregation of the classiest one of my old teams i was on that team years ago we made finals i won the finals that year but we lost the tournament as a whole it sucks but either way yeah i'm playing this guy it's week two at the time of this battle the score for the week is six two my team was up uh yeah we were up six to two on them you need seven wins to win the week so if i win this game we win the week so i was trying to clinch the week uh and yeah let's you know get right into the team first of all so Team wise, this is my team, Sand Spam, that's what I call this. So CTC made me this team like two or three hours before my game. Oh shit. I couldn't decide on what I wanted to use for a long time. Um, I think at first I wanted to use Kiram Normal and I didn't really like the team I had with Kiram Normal. It just had some like clunky mons. I don't like using stuff like Tepu Fini currently. So I just, it's, it's just like stuff like Tepu Fini. Well, that's what the team had by the way, Tepu Fini Garchomp. That stuff I felt like was better in the gen 7 metagame last year uh i don't think it's as good anymore so i figured i'd pass on that instead i brought this shit so uh my team was telling me mega t-tar could be a good bet and i was like yeah that's cool they wanted me to use four attack but i was like fuck four attack i want to use dragon dance tyranitar because that shit's a big threat and i used elastis peel as well i know it's a potent threat it's just slept on in gen 7 so i got mega t-tar with the dragon dance i got lander's t with the z fly bro i'm gonna be honest i'm gonna ring lander's t every single week i'll tell all my opponents bro i feel like my opponents can't get thrown a bigger bone i have a thousand videos out too and in every live i've done in sm i brought a z lander's bro next week in spl i'm gonna tell you right now i'm bringing z lander's again look you can just literally cross down one mon for my opponent next week you can already just cross off that i'm gonna have lander's T bro, bring a clay doll or some shit because it's coming. But either way, yes, I have so as dance stealth rock to attack flies. He land his T. This shit is broken, it like always gets a kill, so why not use it? Ferrothorn, that's the water resist main ash grand check, spike support, tornadoes T physically defensive, cartana check, bulu check, all that stuff. And now, this is the cool part the Rotom Wash McTini double scarf backup. So, originally, we had an extra drill over Rotom Wash. Um, because Excadrill plus T-Tar, you know, that's always a good core. But at that point, it was three setup sweepers in the sand, which is really weird. And I don't know if any of you remember, but I had a very old team. I used last SPL. It was a very successful team. It was triple sand setup. Dragon Dance, Tyranitar, Double Dance, Landers, T, and then SD Excadrill. I already had a team like that. I felt like I didn't need to have another team with triple sand setup. It's a cool little gimmick, but like, how many teams can you really, how many formations of a team can you make where... The same three months up to set up you know so i figured it would just be an inferior version so my boy ojama told me he told me in ctc he's like run the scarf rotom so we ran that and he said that it could be good and then scarf victini was always on this team victini is not a mon i like using that much i mean i've come around to it but scarf is not one i use too much i like using assault vest um and bandit every now and then but scarf is like whatever but final gambit is really good the ability to trade a pokemon turn one and then be five five is really valuable so yeah, this is basically the team. It's like a hyper offense. Well, more of like an offense. It's definitely not bulky offense because Ferrothorn is the only pivot. The rest of this shit is meant to go hard. But yeah, let's get right back into it. Oh wait, before that, I gotta say the agency merchandise is still alive for the next week. Don't sleep. Don't sleep. We got agency orange, agency blue, agency green, premium canvas hoodies with the embroidered detail. Go get that. Go check that out. It's going to be here just for the next week. And then it's gone. Don't be a kid. Don't sleep. Because kids take naps. Don't nap on this merch. Go check that out. Got crew next as well. But anyway, let's get into the replay. Hold on. How do I change that? Okay. So, yes. My opponent. Sorry the intro is so long. But fuck it. So, swap us team. Charizard. Landers T. Victini. Heatran. Kumo. Serp. I watched so many replays in general i knew this team when i saw it but the, i saw this team used before with rotom wash over or was it no it was tepfini over serp or something like that 
or maybe Rotom Wash over Surf, but I've seen this, the first five together. So Triple Fire is some new strategy that has become amazing in Gen 7. I don't buy it. I think it's kind of like cheesy. Just trying to overpower with fire types. Hope you don't run into like Heatran or Toxapex or whatever the case. But if you don't, you can usually have a good matchup. So I knew off the rip his team was most likely going to be Zard Y. Um, but the rest of the sets kind of had me surprised because I was like, you know, Heatran could be the rocker or Landris T could be the rocker. Uh, Victini could be Scarf or Choice Band to take advantage of Charizard's Sun. Komo'o, even that could be the defensive rocker. Um, Serp could be Scarf. So it's like he had so many different options from like all these mods could have had different sets besides the Charizard, which I was very sure was why. But like looking at the matchup, I was like, damn, he has a lot of surprising stuff. So looking at my matchup, I was like, okay, well, best case scenario is Landers T is not the Scarfer. And then my DDT target may be sweep. I have Ice Punch, Stone Edge coverage, which should be able to hit everything pretty tough. Uh, I saw Rotom Wash like a great Pokemon to have. Um, I'm Scarf, uh, which meant I do get walled by Komo'o, but I can at least threaten out his fire types, which was pretty good because those things would be the biggest threats, obviously. Torrenty, I didn't expect too much of Torrenty. It's just knock off Hurricane. Ferrothorn, Ferrothorn was only going to help me if I was able to Thunder Wave something, which was more than likely possible because he has a bunch of mons that want to come in and scare Ferrothorn out. But if I bring this thing in on Serp or Landers T, I I can probably just Thunder Wave. Spike's probably not useful. He probably has double defog anyway with Charizard and Surf and probably even Landers T, uh, seeing as he has these two big Stealth Rock weeks. And uh, my Landers T is Stealth Rock Z Fly. I knew that I was going to get a kill for sure. So, anyway, I look at my matchup and it looks like Victini is useless. It's walled by like everything. It's walled by his Victini. It's walled by his Heatran. It's walled by his Kamo. I was like, time to lead off and get my final game to turn one. So he leads off with Landers T with a the baby nickname. So I knew I had to destroy this shit turn one. Turn one, I go for final game, but I get rid of it. And that was pretty good because, you know, that was one of the big things that could have stopped my Tyranitar. Um, I don't find out the set, but I was hoping it was Stealth Rock. He goes into Charizard here. I basically go into Rotom because I killed the ground type. What else am I going to do? He goes into Zard, maybe predicting Tornadus T, maybe predicting Landers T. I've also tried to hear very easy bring in my torn and just U-turn out as he goes into his Heatran. And that's nice for me because I do a little Volt Turn action, chip the Serp, and this is going to be basically the easiest rocks that I'm going to get. So I'm going to put the rocks up as he goes into Serp. Um, now I go for Z-Fly as he goes for Defog, which is annoying. I would have rather taken a Leaf Storm than let him get my rocks off. Because keeping my rocks off, uh, rocks up would have meant that Charizard's at 50%. That just makes it more manageable. Rotom Volt Switch range, etc. But yeah, go for Sky Strike here. Kill that thing, which is cool. I kill the Cert, but again, it's not that useful. Maybe it helps with Rotom a little bit. It goes into Charizard here. This is very obviously Charizard Y, like I said. So I have to get out of here. Bring in the Rotom Wash as he goes for the what? Solar Beam? No, he goes for Flamethrower, sorry. He goes for Flamethrower on the Switch. Uh, I knew he was probably going to go for Solar Beam or Focus Blast. And if I had a sack, it was going to be Rotom. And I was under the impression Rotom could probably take one Solar Beam. But probably like 95%. But yeah, I've also switched here as he goes into Vic. I am Scarf. Um, it does 26%. I'm not max special attack Rotom or anything. I did the calc. And you have to be max. If you're max HP, you can't even take this much from Bull Switch. So I figured, okay, he's probably like banded or some shit. Either way, I wasn't sure what to expect. Like, I, I like, I was very sure he, he wasn't uh, Scarf. And if he was Scarf, I didn't think he had Final Gambit. Regardless, though, this turn, I went straight for Ice Punch. I think. Now he goes for Final Gambit. As I go for Ice Punch, this Ice Punch was a super bad play. Now I think at this exact moment i clicked this ice punch i thought he was gonna u-turn into komo'o and it was gonna be physically defensive komo'o or i just thought he was gonna u-turn into komo'o and i wanted damage right there to stop him from setting up i don't truly understand my thought process looking back dragon dance was the correct play but plus one ice punch does not kill even zero hp invested komo'o i think even offensive komo'o was able to take uh the ice punch so i think in my head i didn't want to sack titar yet um and i thought he was going to u-turn hard into komo'o so i'm pretty sure that was my mentality looking back i probably should have just dragon danced um and you'll see why in the next coming turns but i don't know i really thought he was just first of all he wasn't max hp so i didn't think he would have final gambit the whole point of final gambit is to have a lot of hp but he doesn't have any hp invest but he did have final gambit anyway so i was hella confused I was like, what? Like, like I, I thought I had this like figured out. So I went for Ice Punch, expecting a Bandit or Scarf U-turn into Komo'o. Then I do 50%. The Komo'o is scared of setting up uh, later on. 
or just right there in front of me and i figured i'd still need tyranitar sand to deal with charizard because if i get the sand up i could sleep with hydro pump that's like you know that that's it it's pretty straightforward to me i just wanted to keep the sand to cancel out the sun so rotom's hydro and hurricane was more accurate as well it was all part of it and just weaken the flamethrower like I, I needed the sand that was the bottom line but either way he brings in Komo'o here, and this basically confirms to me this is probably an offensive Komo'o, and I was like, okay, that makes sense. Um, so he goes for DD here, he sets up. I go for Ice Punch trying to get the chip. I do 60%, like I said, plus one wouldn't have killed. But I freeze him, and I was like, oh, that's tough. That's tough. So here, I talk some shit. Well, this is my buddy, but I don't really talk shit. I said, should I make it interesting on the agency? So I go for Dragon Dance instead of just killing him off. But in reality, Dragon Dance is probably my play. Then I get two DDs and I kill him, taking advantage of the freeze. True scum shit. That was the agency freeze. The agency freeze comes into play. I smoke that. Uh, he goes into Charizard at, on my Stone Edge. I blow that thing up. He goes into Heatran here, and now it's over. GG. Yeah that sucked for him honestly okay so back to here so say i didn't freeze he would have been at 34 percent he told me his set was close combat ice punch thunder punch electrium i knew he was gonna have cc and ice punch or whatever but what plays would i have made in this current situation well he's not gonna go for the z electric here he's more than likely just gonna cc either way i think i would probably go into my ferrothorn on the plus one plus one because as i said i still do require my sand to win this game i still do require my sand to win this game so here's what i would end up doing i would probably go into my ferrothorn this turn let's say he close combats okay so uh what's it called rough skin oh, sorry iron barbs plus sand is about 18 percent so it'd be down to about 16 percent i would then go into lander's t after my ferrothorn is sacked landers t would put this thing at minus zero he has ice punch i know that i would pivot into my torn t he would die to helmet plus sand this thing's out the way all it does is kill ferrothorn okay and then at that point i would switch the weather and sweep with my scarf Fordham hydro pump i'm very convinced and even then it's not guaranteed that he has a, a win because if i change the weather my landers t can take a flamethrower put up rocks potentially go for a fly whatever the case and if sand is up, my Torrens Hurricane is 70%. So I think regardless, I still had a good shot winning this. Because I would have just sacked my Ferrothorn and got out of this alive. Unless I intimidated him with Landry's T. And then he predicted me to predict his Ice Punch, go to Torrent, And then he went for Z Gigabolt Havoc. No fucking way though. It wouldn't have happened. So yeah, it sucks. But I'm pretty sure I still had the outs to win this more than he did. So either way, it's tough for him because it took him out immediately. He could have done some shit. But I don't know. I felt like I still had a good shot. Either way, tough for him. Great for me. 2-0. Dragon Sprout Tyrants win the week. We crushed our opponents this week. 9-3. We're like number 3 or 4 in standings now, which is okay. Um, but I'm 2-0, which is cool. I mean, some moons hella easy. Um, but yeah, that's the first replay. My SPL game. <clears throat> Let's get into my draft game. So draft Premier League. Blunder versus Vino. Oh, shit. My team for this is called the Bibs. Yeah, Bibs. Bib Arrows. Crazy. So this is Gen 7 as well. Oh, let me change the sides. You can see we have like the same team, basically. So I've never played draft until today, or when I played this game last week. I've never played draft. And in draft, what you do is you pick from like a pool of Pokemon, and you like know the pool your opponent has. So I think we each had like nine. Um, and then we each had nine, and like six of them were the same or something. That's why he has like a Rotom cut i didn't have access to rotom cut otherwise i would have brought it because look his whole team gets smashed by rotom cut so i would have used it for sure um if i had the opportunity but no we have like nine mons each then you pick six so it's pretty obvious we have like the best ones like gren uh lopany ladios all that but anyway yeah i'm using this team my teammates built for me i think my boy sky built it i don't remember either way they passed me this team they said try this out and uh i was like okay so in draft basically you know what's coming or you know you have a good idea of what you're probably gonna face and you can also tailor make your sets to dealing with the opponent's team for example my ladios it doesn't need draco meteor in this game it has thunderbolt ice beam shadow ball ghost dmz thunderbolt and ice beam is the good coverage for torn greninja rotom cut um, and then shadow ball with ghost dmz is able to one hit ko metagross so it's a cool tech um, the rest of my team greninja by the way has to be torrent it's not allowed to be battle bond or protean i think they've decided that's too broken you have to be torrent but even with torrent it's quite good so the way my team is structured um let me go to team builder where's my team 
Where's my draft build, bro? Did I delete it? Oh, I deleted it. Shit. That's unfortunate. Either way, my draft build. So, yeah, this team is basically pretty offensive. It's uh, Toxic Spikes, Spikes. No, it's Toxic Spikes, Dark Pulse, Ice Beam, Surf, uh, Greninja with Focus Sash. That's what I wanted as a lead. Helmet Gramble to deal with the Lopanese. Uh, it's a Metal Sound Celesteela. Looking back, probably should have been Flamethrower. Start the Rock, Pilot Swan, and then just regular fake out Lopanese. So we both loot off a Greninja turn one. Since I know he's Torrent, I'm not too worried about anything. I just go for a Toxic Spike turn one because I know putting this up will be great. I do know there's potentially Defog on both Rotom and Tornadus, so this could be bad. But in general, I want to keep a T Spike up to limit his Greninja, his Gramble, his Lopanese. It's just nice. And I don't have access to spikes anymore, so otherwise I would have set those up for Metagross. He goes into this. I go for an Ice Beam here because I have a Sash. So originally my team had Mystic Water on Greninja, but I wanted to run Sash because I figured if they were going to bring Rotom Cut, they should bring Scarf Rotom Cut. Because Rotom Cut is quite a good matchup versus this team if you look at it. A lot of these guys, I mean, these four all de destroyed by Leaf Storm. Celestia gets owned by Vol Switch, and Lottie can only take so many. Plus, he has such an easy play style which is running scarf road on volt switch into assault vest metagross and he just traps my shit not to mention agility metagross with thunder punch also 6 0s his team so in general i was under the impression my opponent had a very good matchup but he's not scarf road he's spadef and he goes for toxic here i was like what the fuck it looks like he was trying to catch my latios but like what why don't you just volt switch i dark pulse this turn for no reason i think i expected him to go into greninja or metagross i don't know why you'd go to either of those and i wanted to get more damage or low but i don't know either way stupid play i mean it doesn't make a difference because i crit so it does the same amount of damage as ice beam pain splits gets back to 55 i go for ice beam again i go to latios here as he goes for thunderbolt yes he goes for thunderbolt as i switch out there cool i figured i need it or i thought he might defog and i wanted to keep it uh, ice beam here as he stays in but that is quite defensive it's been taking these attacks he goes for signal beam here so his set is toxic pain split thunderbolt signal beam dude this shit is walled by pilo swine i really feel like my opponent and his team picked a pretty bad rotom for this matchup i don't understand why you wouldn't just run scarf trap my lottie with the solid best metagross and then kill everything with thunderbolt and leaf storm like i don't know either way whatever he goes to Torn here as I go for the Shadow Ball. Again, another greedy play, trying to hit Metagross on the switch. Despite me having the Ghost Z, I just wanted to flex. I wanted to show them that where I come from, it's crazy. I go to Lopen here on Hurricane. I live that shit easily. It does like 50, 60% max. So I went to it. I didn't want to go into my Celesteela and get knocked off. He goes to Gramble as I just go for Fake Out, which is fine. I just needed my Evolution off to deal with the Greninja later on. I go to Palace one here as he goes for the player of cool. You know what that means? It means free rocks. Do I yeah, I go for free rocks as he goes for the rest. Now here, I believe I predict Grand to come in. Or Rotom. He goes to Rotom Mo. Here he does some crazy shit. Um he goes into his Gramble and I go for surf. I don't know what he expected. Uh and I do 54%, which is nice damage. I'm in torrent now too. He sacks Rotom, so he really just donated me a ton of HP on Gramble. He messed up there. Now, he goes into his Tornadus, but unfortunately, because I'm Sash and not Mystic Water, I'm going to barely miss out on the KO. However, I still think Sash was a superior item in this battle, just because it did allow me to stay in on the Rotom uh, and go for the Ice Beam and all that. If I was Mystic Water and he was Scarf, I would have looked stupid if I just sacked my Rotom. So I think I made the right play. Either way, he removes my T-Spike, which sucks because I didn't get to poison Gren or Lopany, but it's fine. High jumping on the switch to Gramble. High jump kick here again, I miss. It doesn't matter, honestly. I only high jump kick there because I wanted to hit the Metagross if he pivoted into it. Another greedy play, unnecessary. It doesn't matter that I missed a high jump kick. You can argue that he should have hit Hurricane, even though that's 70%. This is 90, but whatever. And so that would have done 50 anyway. Um, yeah. Now I just frustration, knock him out, and then I live on 1 HP, which is great. At least my Lopany survives. He goes into his own Lopany. I know he's going to no balls, go for fake out. I mean, I just know he's not going to double there. Um, because he might be thinking in his head he's going to sack 1% Lopany, but I have like the biggest counter to this. I double out here into Latios. It's quite obvious he's going to go into Metagross. I wanted to stop all potential setup opportunities. Looking back at it, I probably should have assumed this had Stealth Rock because nothing else can run Stealth Rock on his other 5 Pokemon. However, I wasn't sure if he would even run Stealth Rock. I also thought Agility had quite a good matchup versus me. Agility weakness policy, poof, 
crazy matchup. So I thought he could run that or just even agility Z move, agility life orb. I don't know. You don't need to run rocks. I mean, it's like whatever versus my team. Either way, I go for my Z Shadow Ball here. I think it's insane that he stayed in here. Um, yeah, I mean, I had the fact that I had Shadow Ball, I feel like made that so obvious. So I really expected him to have to just go into like Torn as a sack or Lopany or like Greninja. Unless he expected me to go for like Thunder or some shit. I don't know. Either way, I think this is like extremely obvious. Plus, it's like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he just had uh, Shook. I don't mean to be like shitting on this guy or anything. I just think it was so obvious. Either way, he lets me kill his Metagross, which is clean. At this point, the game is completely over. I can safely sag my Latios to Dark Pulse, knowing this thing cannot get Battle Bond and turn into Demon Ash Greninja. Going to Granbo, which is funny enough, going to be able to pick up a kill with Play Rough as he stays in the just Dark Pulse. Maybe he's Scarf or something. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't have a better move. Goes into Torn here. I don't want to die to Hurricane, so I go into Celesteela. Uh, here I pivot into Palaswan because I want to keep my Celesteela to Air Slash later on. I don't know why, but I did. Uh, he goes for Inferno Overdrive. That was a fire play by me. I mean, I knew he'd have Heat Wave anyway. <clears throat> I shot on the switch, get a little chip, pivot into Grand Bull on the return. But Grand Bull is really hard body. Able to go for a clean rest here. As he's going to what i'm gonna what sack pilo oh, i go hard and sell the steel again no fucks he died dodge hurricane i have some special attack invest so air slash is going to be able to twit ko yup air slash here as he goes for taunt a heat wave it doesn't do too much at all yeah only half air slash again knock him out and that's going to be a dead tornadoes he's going to go into his lopini and then i'm just going to pivot around go into max hp gramble make him minus one attack Back into Celesteela, return, back to Granbo, he dies, and that's that. So, put on a 2-0 clinic this last week. SPL, win. Draft Premier League, win. I'm nice, 2-0. That's real agency shit. Cop the merch right now, because I just 2-0 victory. But now I'll see you guys soon. Oh, also, true agency stream tonight, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. I have to do it. Agency stream. I'll see you there. Peace.